All right, are you ready for the word? If you're ready for the word, just say, bring it on. All right, open your Bible to the book of Acts today. I want to wish everybody a very happy Father's Day. And uh, I'll tell you, I've preached a lot of Father's Day messages across a lot of years. And I'll tell you, I believe and am grateful for fathers that serve God. Because when fathers serve God, it makes a big impact. Amen. And so I want to commend every father that is here that is a believer. And uh, let me tell you, you don't necessarily have to be a biological father to be a father. How many of you know that that's true? Amen. You know, you can, you can be an uncle. You can be a, a cousin. You know, you can be uh, that person that has an impact on the next generation. So can we just give a great big hand for every dad that's in the room today? Amen. <laughs> Spiritual dads, adopted dads. Amen. We love our dads. Amen. Amen. Well, today I want to lift up a man who is a great example of a, of a great father. And I want to uh, share about this man. His name is Stephen, all right? And when you first hear about Stephen, it's in the book of Acts chapter 6. And some of you may realize that he was the first Christian martyr. He was a bold and a fearless man of God. And I know you're probably thinking, well, I don't know much, uh, you know, about Stephen, especially if he had a wife or if he had children. We don't really know that, uh, but but the truth is he probably didn't have a wife or children, but uh, he was indeed what I want to call a father of the faith, and the scripture talks about spiritual fathers. Let me read this for you today, 1 Corinthians 4, 15, it says, for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, and of course we know, uh, you know, that this, you know, refers to, you know, winning people to Christ, you become their spiritual father. We're, Stephen's not our spiritual father in the Lord, because none of us were saved under his ministry, but he's what I want to call this morning a father of the faith. He's someone who the Holy Spirit thought enough of to put him in the Word and lift him up as a great man of God, and men who are dads need to be great men of God. So uh, I believe that, that we can learn from him. And, and so the good news today is I'm not asking anyone here to, to, go, to go out and become a martyr for Christ, all right? All right, now if that happens, praise God, right? You'll be far better to be with Christ, amen? Amen. But let me, I doubt that that's going to happen, so everybody just kind of relax today. That's not what this message is about. But uh, we're just going to jump into the Word, and we're going to let God's Word talk to us. Not necessarily what the pastor would think, this is a good idea to preach on this, but when we're talking about Stephen, we're going to let the Word speak to us, right? Because that's what we need is God's Word. Well, how, do you, how many of you know that there's no such thing as a perfect church in all the world? Uh, you know, I, had a, I went to a church one time and they said, the end of your search for a perfect church. Yeah, the end of, and that's a nice little sing-songy, end of your search for a perfect church. I thought, well, man, I better not join here. I'm going to mess things up. <laughs> Hello? Can you know there's no such thing as a perfect church, right? Absolutely not. In Acts 6, there was a, there was a problem, okay? The, there was a benevolence ministry where they were giving, you know, proportions or food or something to the widows. And some uh, elements of the widows groups that were by racial uh, things, I think some group was getting overlooked. And so they needed some men that were full of the Holy Spirit to go and, and uh, look after that so that the apostles could stay in the Word and in prayer. And so they helped, uh, they chose seven men to help them in this. Acts chapter 6 and verse number 3, I want you to note a couple things here. It says, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men full of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit. I like that part. Amen. And wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. Now, I want you to understand that they were looking for men who were filled with the Spirit of God, right? Obviously, Spirit-filled men can be trusted, amen? Acts chapter 6 and verse 5, just a couple of verses later, says this, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and notice what it says, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and 
Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, Nicholas, a, a proselyte from Antioch. And so how interesting that they, they kind of name all the others, but in particular, they wanted you to note that Stephen was a man that was full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. And how many of you know that faith is a byproduct of the Holy Spirit because it's a fruit of the Spirit. How many of you know that, right? So undoubtedly, Stephen was one of the outstanding men within the early church, but the important thing was that he was full of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that that is God's heart. God's God's desire for every man, in fact, for all of us today, right, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God's looking for us to be filled with the Spirit of, of, of Almighty God. And uh, the Scripture tells us that on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God was outpoured that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and that's my heart's desire that every person here understands what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit to be immersed in the Holy Spirit to be baptized in the Holy Spirit come on how many of you believe we need the Spirit of God in this day and hour amen so here's the question today how did being filled with the Holy Spirit, how did that affect Stephen? What, what made him a great father of the faith? Faith, I've got seven little points here today I want to talk to you about. First of all, a Spirit-filled father is available to serve the Lord. That's where we get to know Stephen, right? Uh, seven men were wanted, not for preaching, uh, you know, not for some important position or high position in the church, but they were wanted to be, you know, kind of a hidden ministry, kind of a place of serving tables, waiting on tables, making sure all the widows were taken care of at the Saturday pancake breakfast in Jerusalem, right? And, uh, you know, some people think, well, that may not have been that important. Well, how many of you know all ministry is important to God? Come on. And this is a wonderful example for all fathers, right? And uh, I want to just say as a pastor how much I appreciate the men of this church. Amen. I just am so grateful for the men of this church who help us in so many different ways. Amen. Mowing lawns, doing repair work, serving in rangers, painting a trailer that then get stolen, teaching classes, running sound, counting offerings, folding bulletins, working and celebrate recovery, bringing people who don't have a ride to church and doing all those kind of ministries. Come on, they're willing to serve. That's a sign that they're filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Let's give our men a big hand today. Amen. They serve the Lord. And I've always loved the scripture in Joshua, Joshua 24 and verse 15 that says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How many of you know when dads serve, everybody serves? The family serves. And I appreciate fathers who lead their family by setting an example of service to the Lord. And I'll tell you, I was raised as a pastor's son, and, and uh, I tell you, I know what it is to uh, straighten up the church and help around the church, and I was raised serving the Lord. Amen? My dad still serves the Lord. He's a little older now, doesn't probably quite do as much as he used to, but uh, I'm grateful for that heritage that I have. But a spirit-filled Christian is going to be available to the Lord and to the church for whatever a task that the Lord asks them to do, right? And uh, being filled with the Spirit's a wonderful thing, but it's more than just kind of jumping up and down for joy in the presence of God. I like that part of it, don't get me wrong, but it has a very practical side because when the Spirit of God is inside of you, you just want to do something for Jesus, amen? You want to serve Him. You want to be a part of the kingdom of God. And, uh, you know, Stephen was willing to wait tables. And had Stephen had children, I don't know whether he did, but I'm certain that his kids would have been there passing out the pancakes at the widow's breakfast. All right? You know what I'm talking about. Why? Because when dad served, the whole family serves. My kids used to make fun of us a little bit. They would say, well, I guess we got to all go work in the family business. And I'd tell them, yep, that's right. This is the family business. Amen. How many of you know it's a privilege to work for Jesus? Amen. And then secondly, a spirit-filled father is a channel for God's power. 
I like this part. Acts chapter 6 and verse number 8, we're told of the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit through Stephen. Now watch this. It says, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Now hold on a minute. Was Stephen one of the disciples of the apostles? No. He's just a regular guy. And there he is out there filled with the Holy Spirit and signs and wonders accompanied him. Now, we don't know what that looked like. I don't know. Maybe there were widows in wheelchairs or on crutches that were at that uh, pancake breakfast. I don't know how it all happened. But all I know is that he was full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, and so full of faith and power that the Scripture says signs and wonders occurred. How many of you know that signs and wonders are not just for TV preachers? Hello, come on. The scripture says these signs will follow those who believe. Of course, how many of you know it wasn't Stephen who did the signs and wonders? It was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, King Jesus, amen. It was the Holy Spirit working through him. Stephen was just a channel, and that should be true of every single one of us. It can be true for every single father. And God may not use you. He may not perform miracles in the same way that, 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 that he, he did through Stephen. But nonetheless, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to flow through every single individual. I love John chapter 14 and verse number 12. It says this. It's a promise you can believe in. Jesus said these words, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, How many of you believe in Jesus today? Come on. He who believes in me, the works that I do, He will do also, and greater works than these will He do, because I go to my Father. Now how many of you know when Jesus went to His Father, what happened? The Holy Spirit was poured out. Come on. And so I tell you, I have had the greatest example of a Spirit-filled dad in the person of, of my father-in-law, Benny Gerdes. He was a man's man, all right? He loved to hunt. He loved cars and trucks and guns. He was a farmer. He might even wrestle somebody in kind of a friendly way, all right? But he was also a man that was filled with the Holy Spirit. I have seen him in church many times across many years, uh, in altars, in prayer, in seeking God. He had the habit when he was a truck driver, okay, he drove from Worthington, Minnesota to Minneapolis and back every night. The first part of the way, which is about three and a half to four hours, I guess, that was his time to be with God in prayer. Every single day, he wouldn't turn on the CB radio. He would be communing with God and praying and seeking God. And he said, on the way home, that was my time. That was my time to just enjoy myself. Come on. I'm just here today to tell you that prayer works. Do you believe that today? Amen. Now, when he was alive, uh, you know, he died about a year and a half ago. But when he was alive, he had the same habit every single morning, all right? He would get up, come downstairs, grab about 87,000 vitamins, it seemed like. Not that many. At least 25. And he would put them in his bowl. He would put his uh, cereal together. And he would open up his Bible. And he would read the Word. And he would pray. It didn't matter whether it was Christmas. didn't matter whether it was a holiday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. didn't matter. That's how he lived his life. Amen. He prayed two times a day. In fact, my wife was telling me the other day that the, just before he passed away, uh, that in the evening, uh, just uh, he was that Drinda and Jereen were there, and he lifted up his voice as he sat in his chair. And she said, with a very loud voice, with intensity, with tears rolling down his cheeks, he began to pray for this world. He prayed for our president. He prayed for our country. He prayed for his church. He prayed for every one of his kids by name. He prayed for every one of his grandkids by name. Come on, somebody. That's the kind of dads that we need in our world. Dads that'll take a stand. Dads that that will believe. That's it'll be so full of the Holy Spirit that they'll pray. And I want to tell you something. Signs and wonders followed that man. His son, Lauren, was born with a hole in his heart. The doctor says he cannot live that way. One day he was coming out, coming up to the hospital and a nurse came out of the hospital and told him, Mr. Gertis, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your son is going to die tonight. He'd never seen that nurse before. He didn't listen to her. He just turned away and he went to the Lord in prayer and he cried out to God in prayer. Jereen's brother, Lauren, it today is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and he's, lot, uh, he's older than us. Come on, someone. And I'm just here today to tell you that God heals today. Amen. We could tell you about Jereen. 
horrendous mom, Marvine, who somehow got her eyes, banged her head, and her eyes got crossed, and God healed her, and how they fasted and prayed that my wife would come to Jesus, and, and so many different things happened in his life. 